Hi all, Martin Brown here. In this video, we will build a triple cone model. We will do it two ways. First, with an equal stress field, and second, using force density membrane. To save time, I will start by reading in a model of the basic work line geometry. This model was also built in NDN. Alternatively, you could read in a DXF file. Let's measure a couple distances so we understand the size of the structure. You could also merge in some people to help visualize the scale. So, next I will generate membrane elements in the center cone. I'll set the appropriate options on the control panel, the segments, the mesh type, and the ring diameter. And then click out the key nodes defining the cone. The cone is automatically generated. Notice I also get radial cables and perimeter cables. This is because these options were selected on the control panel. Now I'm measuring the node spacing that was generated. It's about one and a half meters. I will put that same spacing in the perimeter of the end cones. and then change these elements into cables. Let's measure the bail ring diameter and slope. This time, we will match the new membrane elements up to the existing perimeter nodes. Set the ring diameter and slope. Then click out the cone. Okay, all looks good. And now the last cone. Set the parameters. And then click out the cone. Now, remember, this is just the generated mesh. The model is not yet in force equilibrium. I will get rid of the work line elements that are no longer needed and clean the model of any potential problems. Next, we will define the properties. For this, we can simply use defaults. Section properties, material properties, and pre-stress. Cable pre-stresses have been estimated based on the fabric pre-stress and the geometry of the model. I'll quickly check my data. The membrane has a pre-stress of 2 by 2 kilonewtons per meter, and the top and bottom are defined. And finally, we will fix the boundary nodes. Since we've worked so hard on this model, let's save it. Now we can do the form finding. Notice how the shape is changing. The model has converged. Let's take a look at it. All looks good. Next, let's analyze it to double check the equilibrium. But first, since we did not bother with any framing up at the bail ring, let's just fix those nodes. Then we go into the analysis environment and run the analysis. It immediately converges because it is already in equilibrium from the form finding. Let's look at the resulting stresses. The fabric stress is very close to two kilonewtons per meter because that's what we asked for. The only reason it is not exactly two is because of the self-weight of the fabric and the cables. Now let's build the model again, this time using force density membrane elements. We'll start with the same outline geometry. This time we'll generate force density membrane elements. We will not ask for radial cables this time. We click out the center cone.
I'll skip some of the steps that you've already seen. Click out the cone on the right. And now the cone on the left. Let's get rid of these valley cables. I do not want them in this model. I want this to be a pure membrane model. Again, we set our properties, section properties, material properties, pre-stresses. This time we have a force density defined in the membrane. And let's do the form finding. It doesn't have to move as much this time because the cones as generated were very close to a force density shape. And again, we analyze it to see what the final stresses are. We see the classic force density stress distribution. There are high stresses in the radial direction at the top and lower stresses at the bottom. The hoop direction stresses are a bit more uniform. Now let's just look at the shape. Notice how smooth it looks everywhere. It's beautiful. And thanks for watching.